<coughs> okay, Mayor of Pomona, the City Council, are going to start talking now. Councilwoman Gary Sosa. Oh. Was that for the last meeting? One of them is missing. I didn't celebrate that day of the dead thing. I'm alive. And uh, I was uh, very happy to attend uh, at least one of them, or more than one. But I did attend a celebration in the uh, Dark Gallery. And uh, I'm very pleased to know that uh, they celebrate the Day of the Dead with the dignity and respect and spirituality that it deserves. Because after all, the Day of the Dead is not, it's not a carnival, it's not a fiesta. It's, uh, it's a very uh, spiritual uh, time that has been uh, uh, preserved for the hundreds and hundreds of, of years now. Uh, even before the Spanish came into America, it's a uh, native country. Uh, so very well done, and I uh, have to thank the Latino, Latina Round Table, and the other organizations that we put it together. I <coughs> also attended uh, two of a, of a three part uh, series of activities and uh, sermons uh, related to Cabo Hills, which was a uh, dinner uh, theater that was. Uh, Functioning since the 30s, all the way She's to talking the about the celebration 30s, of the Day of the Dead. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, exhibit and uh, talks that they are uh, doing there. And I'm finding out that many, many Pomona residents participated uh, in the activities, including some of my relatives. And uh, it's very impressive to see the photograph there of some activity that happened uh, for so many years. Uh, the group that is in charge of it is now uh, going to produce a documentary. And this is true history of, of, of Latino, <coughs> Latino community yeah, in unison with, uh, with the uh, rest of the community from the 30s to the 70s. Very, very interesting. And, uh, and yes, Saturday we also, uh, Dr. Lena Gubi and I attended uh, the previous anniversary of the, of the Purpose Church. And uh, it was a very lively and very uh, a nice activity uh, with lots and lots of history as well. So those were the, the, the two people among the many that attended that really, really uh, uh, stay in my mind, stay in my mind, don't really Thank you, Council Yes, thank you, Mr. Martin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will be brief. I have a lot of... Uh, Updates just since our last meeting, our congresswoman had her national shakeout at Ganesha, was very well attended, ah. and it got a lot of people um, uh, trying to get people more proactive rather than reactive in case of an emergency. Sunny just hope that everyone had a wonderful and safe Halloween all, uh, in conjunction with Decker Elementary, my be district, my mom was sponsored and held the very first Trunco Treat event, and it was very successful. I think it's a much safer avenue for families to. Uh, to use and utilize for Halloween rather than going into a ton of neighborhoods or walking the streets, you know, jaywalking and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And if any other council members would like to do it for next year, I'd be more than happy to um, help out with the endeavors. The next thing I'd like to talk about and thank everybody is that Phillips Paw Park is now open. And uh, if you don't know what Phillips Paw Park is, I will tell you what it is. It is the very first dog park in the city of Pomona. Aww. And so I was very excited uh, to have it in our district. It was very well attended, a lot of amenities for the puppies, and I'm very oh. thankful to my colleagues, and I'm thankful for the community for receiving it and actually using it. It is <coughs> open and utilized every single day, and it just gives our doggy owners and uh, our men's best friend an extra place to go to in our parks. And then finally, uh, just to announce, I went to the 5K. Uh, a bunch of our colleagues actually participated in it. And thank you to everyone, Pomona, and everybody who was a part of those uh, efforts. I'm sure our mayor will elaborate more on that. Uh, hopefully, we'll do another 5K soon. And uh, finally, just a congratulations to our staff. Uh, our Palomar's haunted house was absolutely incredible. It was so scary but it was absolutely beautiful and it's great that our kids have a place to go to. And finally, I will close with this. As your year-long <coughs> representative on the Well, the Water Education for Latino Leaders Fellowship, um, I was given an assignment for community outreach 
and I'm very excited to see that it is actually being implemented and the council will be briefed in the next couple of weeks as to how the project will um, finalize and finish. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Torres. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, I did a lot over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, was with the Western students uh, helping out, trying to um, bring more information about the homeless uh, issue. Um, it looks like a little kid. Festival was a great turnout. And lastly, I do want to thank the staff, uh, <laughs> the department, and the fire department um, for a very successful earthquake seminar that took place uh, in October. <coughs> Yeah, the one you tried to get key people with the opposing viewpoints out. If you say something again, we're going to have you removed. Simple as that. A lot of great people there, a lot of happy people there. Uh, everybody was really excited to attend the event. Uh, so thank you very much to the staff and to the police as well. Thank you, Councilman Torres. I just want to remind folks that uh, there's a process here. And if you want to speak during your two to three minute time frame, you can do that. But nobody is to shout, nobody is to, what we're supposed uh, to listen raise their to voice uh, to anyone, whether respond. you're in the audience or whether you're uh, speaking to a council member. Just want to emphasize that. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Torres. Council Member Russ Cole. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say uh, that I also went to the 830 Purpose Church 30th anniversary. It's a very nice event. Uh, I was at the tour yesterday. Oh, Sunday, yes. right? Okay, I was at the tour. I did, I've been doing so much. But I've been, uh, I went to the tour, I uh, went to the Ezel Pomona Historical Society, they had a wonderful uh, craft, um, uh, uh, different, different things that they made. It was really a nice event. Uh, I also participated in the 5K, I did it in 49 minutes, I'm surprised. <laughs> Whoa, but you know, I was just car walking, so I plan on jogging next time, but you know, I'm gonna lose my weight. Okay, so, <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> uh, me and the mayor, we, went, we met with some constituents regarding the Mountview Park. Uh, we're trying to make it safer. We've got, uh, there was a problem with a uh, chain link fence that had been cut open. We had it repaired that time uh, when uh, we were there. Uh, we are getting together with our constituents, making sure that, that we get our parks back and uh, keep them safe. And we're going to be doing a lot more, probably uh, working together and cleaning up uh, some of the areas over there, Car Cordova Apartments, um, down in that particular area is one of my target goals, and I'm planning on really doing some work with the mayor regarding this project. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Gonzalez. Um, I was just going to follow up with uh, some of my colleagues as far as some of the attend uh, events that we attended. Uh, Councilman Alterer's Cole mentioned the Pomona Heritage Home Tour. That was fantastic. Because even though I didn't get to visit the mayor's home and many of the other homes on that were featured, I got to see the YMCA. So um, for those of you who are, um, I guess, familiar with the YMCA and, and, and as a historic preservationist, that's been a pending issue. And uh, so just seeing, seeing it trouble. before, he was pretty um, proud of himself that are talking about his mom's little meeting. Um, happened with you that know, the one they tried to keep the best time possible. Of you couldn't have picked a better individual to purchase the YMCA. I mean, he found its spectra and its awards for preservation in the country and his headquarters in Vermont. But so anyways, I'm excited about that. Um, like uh, Councilmember uh, Terry also mentioned, I went to that Turkish Church's 30th anniversary, um, uh, I guess, mass, and, um, and that was actually the 147th anniversary of being in Pomona, uh, back when they were known as the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, Same way to that, um, the pastor that started the church was Reverend Fry Fryer. I got to give tours of his grave as part of the historical <coughs> site, uh, cemetery tours. So uh, that was uh, that was um, something that um, I, I enjoyed making that connection because he's buried out in Spotter, which is how we got the Baptist Church in Pomona in the first place. Uh, the Film Society had Ultra Guys at the Old Stump. That was a fantastic turnout. The, Dem the Democratic Club, uh, we had the Legacy Awards. Democratic that was really honored a lot of them. Uh, a lot of wonderful people. Jerry, then the Democratic Club. Uh, and then I guess finish up the Baptist, or, uh, not the Baptist Church, uh, from one unified school district had Rachel's Challenge at the different campuses, and that's like an anti-bullying campaign, and I think that's, um, that's, uh, that's one of the better, one of the better uh, anti-bullying campaigns that I've participated in. So We're blind. We get blocked for our belief. That. Oh, and then just, I guess, in anticipation, um, there's probably going to be speakers on Planned Parenthood, so uh, I just want to mention that I see it um, morality and religious opinions 
are not a factor for me during this issue. I see it as a woman's rights issue and a civil rights issue, so I want to make sure that the murder is a civil rights issue, issue, apparently. Baby killing, killing is a civil rights issue. Um, I just have a few yeah, things. Uh, first you of really all, I think it's pretty apparent that there's do a lot of amazing things going on it's offensive. Uh, in this community. Uh, I think every one of us, uh, there's never a shortage of really um, great things happening. Uh, I just want to highlight a couple of them. Um, first of all, I just want to express our sincere thanks that we run Kamala and uh, day one Kamala. Uh, for organizing uh, an absolutely historical event, uh, which was the very first 5K to our knowledge in historic downtown Kamala. And uh, over 750, about 750 runners for the first time. Oh, wow. uh, registered. Yeah, yeah, some, some, yeah, some, yeah, some of them were even registered. And I know that uh, obviously it's a huge undertaking. I, I, I want to add that the California Kamala Pet Band was there. Uh, they did a fabulous job. Uh, we had vendors out there as well. And um, it was just a great community event. Uh, the spirit was incredible. And uh, I know that, uh, if I'm correct, that uh, $5,500 was raised uh, for programming for our children. And uh, I, I know they're still trying to think, think through how they're going to utilize those funds. But uh, it's incredibly exciting. So thank you to We Run Kamal and They Run Kamal for such an outstanding event. mentioned just briefly that uh, Lincoln Park every year has this uh, Halloween. Uh, it's not even necessarily an organized, uh, formally organized event, but we really get thousands of kids. Thousands of kids, not just from Pomona, but we get people from other communities who are coming to that neighborhood to get candy. And they come in all ages and all costumes. Candy. It was a great event this year. Um, again, not formally planned as I understand it, but just People just kind of know that's where you go uh, to get some really great candy and have a great experience. Candy. So just thought, want to thank the folks out there. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Very well and nice. And uh, just two, two, two things, uh, the Historical Society, the home tour, great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making it possible for folks to see these amazing homes that we have in our city. And then just lastly, uh, there's a resident uh, in the Angela Chancellor, uh, Angela Chancellor neighborhood called Sandra Polito. If you're watching Sandra, thank you. Uh, she's really been this person who spearheaded this cleaning effort in that neighborhood. And on Friday, a very small but mighty group uh, cleaned. Uh, we cleaned the gutters and clean the sidewalks and kids were out there. And, uh, uh, I, I think people can see that we're really uh, trying to come together uh, in this specific neighborhood uh, to take ownership uh, of uh, their community. And so uh, our Pomona PD was there. And, just want to thank uh, them for that effort and the Yeah, and in the park, if you don't know, there's a, a pocket park uh, right there. In, All in the pleasantries the, before uh, the fireworks. Hang on, hang on, everybody. And they're excited to be able to get back. Well, that's right. Randy's it's got a great point. So they just talk and talk and talk until everybody's bored out of their minds, and then everybody leaves. So, with that said, City Clerk, I've heard it over to you. Thank God. Thank God. Next is City Manager Communications. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank the Mayor and Council. Thank you. Thank you. Next is public participation. Yay. At this time, the public is invited to address the City Council concerning any items not on the agenda. <coughs> in order to address the City Council, each individual must fill out a speaker card, which is available in the lobby of the Council Chambers. Speaker cards must be completed and turned in to the City Clerk mm -hmm. at this time. Only those speaker cards turned in will be allowed to address the City Council and no lay cards will be accepted. Each person should state their name and will be allowed to speak once, one time. Mm -hmm. All speakers and persons in the audience must adhere to the City Council rules of procedure and uh -oh. form. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, no at heifers. this point, we have, are those for public comment? <coughs> we have um, 38 speakers for public comment. Okay. So I'm going to recommend um, that we uh, limit the uh, public comment to two minutes. If, uh, to the no. Okay. Just to be able to accommodate all the speakers, it is no. a lot. And uh, assuming that everybody speaks two minutes, that's uh, over an hour of uh, public comment. So, um, okay. All right. So if I can ask, uh, if I can ask Mr. Douglas Pierce, please come up to my left. 
and Steve Figueroa, if you'll please come up to my right. I'll check it out. I just want to remind everybody uh, that uh, just we just asked it all. Folks, listen very carefully. And respect hey, look at that. Movies. That's the bigot who celebrated when Angie's son died. It's very sweet. You're right on. there. Welcome. Shame. Good evening. My name is Deborah G. Pierce. I've been a resident and for over 40 years in the city of Florida. This brings me a few meetings back. I made a request to the city council of three properties, and that's not up to code. He's complaining about a property that's not up to code. There's a scripture in the Bible. Yes. It's from Psalms chapter 36, number 9. I love this one. It says that God is the giver of life. Yes. Pro life shares the same beliefs and views of Cesar Chavez, and he favored fairness and fair treatment for everybody. Yet Planned Parenthood practices some of the most unfair treatment to women in the 21st century. Fair treatment is seen abroad in a lot of, in many of the medical disciplines. California Veterinarian Medical Board better requires all practicing veterinarians to be licensed or registered to provide services to animals. That's right. California Board of Behavioral Sciences fairly requires licensure of all practicing the plan murder advocate. marriage and family therapists. 
the California Board of Dentistry fairly requires any practicing dentist is to provide license and it be posted in the facility if they're going to provide oral services. Now, I went down two weeks ago to Pomona, Pomona Planned Parenthood, yeah. pressed a buzzer, and I expected fair treatment for women. Went in and I asked to see the license of the abortionist. I was told they are not required by law is to provide any license to anybody for any reason. Oh. Now tell me how is that fair Thank you, for women? No, it isn't fair. It's not fair. All right. It isn't fair. Don't no, back in the start, please. Um, if I can have a genetic license, please, my left. Hey, Smalvey. I hope I see your last put a card in. Get a, get a blue slip to put a card in. Yeah, it's quiet. I don't know if it's too late. If you want to. Since I only have a few minutes, I'll just get to the chase. One person who can save the lives of eight people through organ donation and enhance the lives of 75 people or more through cornea or tissue donation. Currently, our national wait list is 117,000 in the United States, 21,000 in our state alone. I'm here to, represent, to introduce you to our 15th annual Donate Life Rose Parade Float, the gift of time. This year's 129th Tournament of Roses Parade theme is Making a Difference. Yes. Making a Difference it's celebrates us. the power of kindness in the people in our communities that are selfishly making a positive difference in our lives. The gift of time is truly the greatest gift any of us can request to a waiting recipient, showing the power that each of us has to help one another. <coughs> we have a different approach this year in viewing our donated by 15 annual Rose Parade Float, the gift of time. Our Rose Parade dedication ceremony is scheduled for Tuesday, December 19th, 2017, between the hours of 10 and 12 noon on, uh, in Pasadena. Our first look the event provides the opportunity to showcase the various aspects of our float in a very intimate setting, demonstrating One Legacy's involvement within the community. You will also get to meet the One Legacy honors, honorees, float riders, and floor craft families. I would like to invite the City Council of Pomona to our first look event and place a rose on our float to get the time for the importance of eye organ and tissue donations representing your city of Pomona. Please RSVP by 12-8-17. I am a liver transplant recipient. I received my gift of life on December 27th. Liver transplants are very complicated. The gift I ever received from a stranger. Looks good Thank too. you, Mayor and uh, Mayor Vice <coughs> Mayor, Council Member, City Staff, and the community of Pomona for giving me this opportunity to announce what One Legacy's mission is: saving and giving life to eye organ and tissue donation from first the families we serve and inspire the community to donate life. Thank, Thank you for your work. Thank you. Uh, if I can have uh, Melody Andreo, please come to my right. Welcome, Ms. Weston. Good evening, Mayor Sandoval and council members. My name is Jeanette Ellis Royston. I'm a resident of the city of Pomona. This fabulous city of Pomona. Oh. I consider myself a community activist. I'm also the president of the NAACP, the Pomona Valley branch. As you may already know that the NAACP is the largest, the oldest civil rights organization since 1909 in our nation. I stand before you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, representing ICE Out of Pomona Coalition. I'm standing before you oh in support of human rights for all those individuals who are undocumented. We realize that social justice is important for each and every human being. I said the Pomona Coalition no has wrapped up a ordinance. I'm standing before you to ask if you can kindly consider no. putting that on the agenda no. sometime real soon. No. Social justice. Everybody's entitled to justice. Human beings, we're not talking animals. We know that the immigration system is broken. No, it's not. The National NACP supports 
promotes immigration reform. Yeah, I'm going to close the with this. Party has to and thank you for all that you bus. are doing, all that you have the done, community. and look forward to you to continue working and supporting and promoting ICE out of Thank you. No. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. I just, I realize there's people who are for and against, and I'm just going to ask that both sides freedom of speech uh, for either position or there's no booing. Okay. All right. Thank it takes you. time. Uh, I do have a gun, Willis. It didn't indicate whether he wished to speak or not. Yes. But Mr. Yes, sir. Please come on up, sir. Come on up. All right. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Dunnival, Vice Mayor Kovac, Council Members, and audience present. My name is Melanie Andrew. I am a senior at Green High School, and I am the youth president of the ISO Board of Coalition. Recently, SB 54 has been passed in the state of California, also known as the Future State Bill. This bill will expand protection for immigrants as a way of preventing police officers from holding and questioning people. As a sanctuary city and sanctuary state, it is important for us to comply with SB 54 since it will help ensure the communities can put their faith into police and ease the fear that has been circulating in our communities. The proposed ordinance in Pomona will benefit the residents as it will allow them to continue their daily activities in order to survive and prosper in our city with no fear. Protecting a person's identity and not giving their private information to ICE agents should be taken into account, especially since the community fears the local law enforcement for this reason. This will help fam my family and the families of others in, oh, ICE, in a way that we won't have to live in fear. I take this at heart, especially since I witnessed my family member being separated from me eight years ago. And it is something that affected me a lot. Since till this day, we have no answer as to why he was taken. I kindly ask you to place the proposed ordinance on the next week's council agenda. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Commander Arthur, any Schaefer? Sh Shopper. Shopper, forgive me. Mr. Willis? Yes, I'm glad I got to see this presentation by and for the Vietnamese community, but they're living proof that we don't need any kind of sanctions yeah. or any of that other hogwash. You know, they fled a communist system to come over here. They took their life in their hands to get here. And look what they did. They're presenting you with a check. This is outrageous. They didn't anybody give them special hand or special law. God bless the Vietnamese community. And you, planned murderhood is not a human or civil right, Sir, my friend. Mr. You're going to have to give an account to your maker when you meet him. Mr. Willis. I'm fine with that. Mr. Willis. Yes, sir. First of all, I understand you're very passionate about this. Yes, but if you could just keep it down, and if you could also just not point at people, I sure appreciate it. He's a lot to do whatever you're going to help. Let me continue. You are going to help, buddy. You can't murder your children. I don't know if you've ever had any teenagers, but they're really inconvenient. But we can't murder them. And about this earthquake shakeup, you know, your mother tried to keep citizens with opposing viewpoints locked out of it. Another commie, right? Robin, was that you? What a despot she is. This Raise is outrageous. We all got to follow the same set of rules here. Let's all work together. These people don't, don't need a special set of rules, and the Vietnamese community is living proof of it. You're all outrageous. You've seen all the trash out here and all the homeless? Why don't you get out and take care of that business? Thank you. Can I have Alex Kalil? Please come up to my left. Okay. So my name's, Hello, yeah, my name's Arthur. I'm from Torrance, California. Uh, first of all, it's offensive to me to hear a city council member promoting an abortion mill and considering that a service. That is shameful. The number of black children killed in abortion mills is offensive. It is horrendous. Black lives matter. All lives matter. I've got a picture here of Reuben Morphine. He was executed by an illegal alien. 1990, it was four days after Christmas. I am fed up with this language claiming a sanctuary city or a policy. It is nonsense. It is a nullity. Senate Bill 54 was shoved down the throats of the citizens of California. 80% opposed this. And guess what? It won't matter. ICE has doubled. They have quintupled down five times the effort to go to workplaces, homes, neighborhoods, and schools. 
An ordinance of any kind to try to defy federal law is an offense, and you have no authority to do it. It will have no impact whatsoever. I want you to look at this life and the average of 25 lives a day killed by illegal aliens, plus the 95 million Americans pushed out of work. And again, I will say Black Lives Matter, because if there is any community that has been horribly impacted by illegal immigration, it is black communities. I have heard about black families being firebombed in Boyle Heights, Harbor City, Torrance. And we don't hear about that in the media. And let me, but we're talking Hispanic families, Asian families, all are targeted, all are subject to hurt, harm, and death because of these rampant illegal immigration. Enough is enough. You need to put the lives of American citizens first. You need to be concerned about our homeless, our veterans, foster kids. Yeah, foster children. Rather than telling mothers to kill their kids out of a sense of convenience, how about we ensure that every life has a chance to grow and thrive? An American life, a citizen. That's what matters. That's what has to be cared for. So, um, first of all, God bless Donald Trump, Mike Pence, Jeff Sessions, let's uphold uh, our law, immigration law, you know. Um, and, you know, I want to say that, yeah, that Planned Parenthood killing the babies, that's very bad. You should be ashamed. That's very, very bad. You know, very terrible. Period. That's a very bad thing. Okay, so let's all uphold our immigration laws and, and, and up and respect our president. You know, and I keep hearing this talk about, you know, this is Mexico. Um, let's remember the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty, and let's remember this is not Mexico, okay? Because, you know, Native Americans came from Asia across the Bering Strait. Nobody's native here. Nobody's entitled to be here like the Koreans. They came here, you know, and they're not asking for anything handed out, you know? So let's, um, let's uphold our laws, you know, and, and stop uh, doing illegal things. Americans should be first always. Yes. You know, shame on anybody that doesn't think that this is a country. We are a country of laws. You obey the law. You know, you come over, you come over here. We don't want this to be like Mexico. You know, it's the same, the same trashy country, corrupt that you left. Why would you want to make it like that over here? You know, why not assimilate? You know, and be American. You know, this is USA. Okay, so let's respect our president, Mike Pence. You know, Jeff Sessions and, and the illegals. All illegal aliens should be deported. You better, you better believe it. You better believe it. Every single one of them, you know. Let's uphold the law. If you're a, you know, you're here illegally, you're a criminal, okay? If you came here illegally, you have to, you know, hey, if somebody does a crime, 20 years later you get caught, you get caught. You didn't want to work on the paper or nothing. If you're illegal, you have to go. Because it's against the law. And it's, a, it's a criminal act to be here illegally. So let's obey our laws. God bless Donald Trump. Yes. God bless Mike Pence. And God bless All Jeff right. Sessions. Gail Claiborne is at least up to my left. Thank you. Yes. I love it. Way to go, Khalil. Um, Mayor, uh, council members, uh, Trio Pomona. Uh, I'm the founder of We Run Pomona, and uh, we just want to thank you guys. We want to thank the city, um, myself, and Victor, and um, day one and our uh, partnering uh, organizations for um, for being at an event and for uh, being a part of our event, you know, the first 5K ever in uh, downtown Pomona. And um, we have 750 plus participants. Uh, we um, raised uh, 5,500 dollars for youth programs, uh, the 5K to support the youth programs. And um, yeah, it was, it was a successful event. And thank you guys uh, for being part of it and for being so supportive. Uh, since day one, since it was presented, and I uh, really appreciate it. And we're already in the planning phase uh, for year two uh, for uh, the second uh, 5K. <coughs> it's going to be an on ongoing project, and we're excited about it. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful event. It was. Uh, thank you very much for our police officers, fire department, community, of course, our council members, uh, mayor, and the, the just the natural unifying and just homegrown community feel of it. So many smiles, so many handshakes. I think a lot of everybody made a new friend that day. And everybody in the name of health and trying, you know, it's it's, it's promoting health and being healthy. Um, 
can tell by some very beautiful smiles that I have here. I'd like to share with these uh, with the council members in a second. Here's a beautiful smile, that I forgot, too. The name Where's my today, march officer? I'll get to you as soon as we can. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. And it's not just uh, the Pomona 5K Here's event. We smiles. also are, are out there. We're trying to be uh, create awareness in health for our for the youth in the city. But he won't smile anymore the city because clean he was killed by all safe. And we run at night, every Tuesday night. As well Ruben as has a nice smile. Yeah. Running group. So thank you, thank you very I don't much. think his my mother, mother has smiled since. And his mother's not smiling anymore. Of marathon runners from Pomona that ran in last year's LA Marathon. Thank you. Beep. Thank you. All right. If uh, I can ask Michael Casey, uh, please come up to my right. Welcome, Ms. Bellwork. Thank you, Mayor, Council members, and members of the community. I'm here before you once again to invite you to the 36th annual Pomona and Montgomery Martin Luther King Project. Also here to also ask for your sponsorship. You know, over the years I have did this over about 20 years, and we have given out a lot of scholarships to many people that have come back and doing their work in Pomona, such as Frank Guzman. Also we have lately Melissa Ayala. She is one of our 2011 winners and she is now on the ballot for the president for the Latino Roundtable. So that's just a few of the people that have won awards from us and come back and work in the community. Our speaker this year is Dr. Coley from President of Cal Poly. Our theme this year is difficult times make us a, a stronger community. And with your help, <laughs> you can build a strong community by giving awards to these youth. We have about 11 days left for the awards, and they are going to children 14 to 19. Then the 17th is the last day, and we're still looking for sponsors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Could I get Mr. Morikami? Norma, Norm, I think it's Norm, to be Norma. Norm Morikami, are you here? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's Norm. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael Casey. I'm um, part of the ISA Pomona Coalition. Um, I logistically we need to, as a city to follow the SB 54, which is passed. No, you don't. Um, you know, and all these numbers and all these things and all these um, terms like you know laws being passed, we for, we forget what's important is our community. And I, one of the things that I was really happy to see, and I saw almost all the people from the city council Keeping there, gangs there was a the rally for the Dreamers. <laughs> Um, and I saw half the city council people, I saw, and I, I see a different energy at the city council that I saw from the last mayor. I spoke up here about eight years ago about a trash issue, and there was cynicism on my side and cynicism on the city council, and I, and I see a potential now where we can step up and speak for our vulnerable people in our community. And, and whatever people say, um, it just doesn't work. These raids don't work. Work. We can see it in the Cambodian community. That, that yes, they do work. Now, I'm, I'm now going to get lawsuits. We can see it in our administration that possibly could all be going to jail for the illegal things that they're doing. Oh, so if crooked you know, the federal government is saying, and their laws are illegal, we're going to find ourselves in cities uh, with the community that says, "Hey, you didn't stand up. You didn't take a stand when you should have." We don't just listen to our leaders. We're a country of people, and it's our community, and it's our right to decide and tell and support the people. I, I've seen people come into my local church crying because they don't church. know if they have to get, if their kids supporting will be because they're going to get swept away. Babylon. We need a real I thing. Some of those churches a rainbow on the side. And, and across the board, the ice rays aren't fun. I'm, I'm going to get into funding. There's 10 seconds left. But anyway, I implore you to include this into the next agenda meeting and, and discuss it. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could I get uh, Thomas Smith? Please come up to my right. Oh my God. We're a community because we have laws. Well, well, Thank you. And it's Murakami. Everybody messes it up. It's okay. It was, the, it, was the, it was the first name, actually, because it said Norm, but then I think Norm. I saw a little late. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'll it's okay. Better next time. <laughs> Um, it was over 30 years ago I found myself in a crisis pregnancy situation. I felt that an abortion was my only choice. And because it was legal, I thought it was okay. And I was 
in high school at the time. So um, anyway, my only thought was, I'll just go in and get an abortion. And that was the advice that was given to me. There wasn't really much other advice given to me. However, what I experienced in the years that follow was depression, anxiety, severe back aches, suicidal thoughts, flashbacks of the abortion procedure, of babies crying. I wake up, up often at night and hear babies crying and just thinking I was going crazy and I didn't know where those cries were coming from. I would also see uh, flashes of blood before my eyes when and I was under about stress. It. And so um, later on I found out that those were flashbacks from the abortion. I, I thought it was an insulin problem. I thought maybe I was a diabetic or something and I was seeing spots before my eyes. Mm -hmm. But it was actually um, flashbacks from the abortion, which is pretty common. Should, um, I suffered from PTSD is what I found out later after um, counseling with five different people. Uh, professional counselors and lay counselors. Uh, Planned Parenthood never told me I was going to experience those things. Planned Parenthood is not uh, informing women about these things and also not informing us about what is going to happen to our babies or our yeah. babies. So um, one thing I didn't know either is that my child was going to experience pain through a second trimester abortion. Oh. And so um, I came to learn that later. And I often counsel women who have had the same experiences I did, and men as well. So um, abortion does hurt women and where they are not notified about that. And there's no, no paperwork that you walk in and say these are the side effects. So that's what I'm here to say today about Planned Parenthood. Thank you. Thank you. Just yesterday, we we saw the aftermath of a terrible event yeah. in Sutherland Springs, Texas. First Baptist Church, twenty six innocent, beautiful lives slaughtered. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I my my day was changed. This day, today, was changed. But I'm reminded of life and how precious life is. And I think about the little lives that are being destroyed in the Planned Parenthood abortion mills. Wow. Little tiny babies are being ripped from the wombs of their mother. Uh, oh, it's legal. It must be okay. No, it's not okay. No. It's not more. <laughs> right. It's terrible. And we're alarmed at this it's terrible hideous. event that it's took place hideous. yesterday and other events similar to that. And uh, we should be alarmed about the little babies being destroyed. Whatever trimester they're in, uh, life begins in the womb. And uh, by the spark of Almighty God, the life begins there, conception. And uh, we need to protect those little ones. And uh, the sooner the better, uh, the Planned Parenthood leads. Um, that's my wish. Come on, come on down. Thank you. Brianna Garcia, please come up. Welcome. My name is Denise Smith. I'd like to thank you, Mayor Sandoval, and City Council members for what you do for the city of Pomona. I'd like to personally thank Councilwoman Anna Barrow for coming to the 60th anniversary celebration of Central Baptist Church a few weeks ago and bringing us a beautiful certificate from the city of Pomona signed by Mayor Sandoval and all the council members. I am glad our people got the chance to meet Councilwoman Ontiveros and that she was able to see the children who ride our bus to church to learn about Jesus. Children's lives are very important to us at Central Baptist Church. I'm thinking that if we want God's blessings on Pomona, we need to start blessing God in Pomona. If we don't want people killed in Pomona, we need to stop allowing babies to be killed in Pomona. Right. I urge you to think about what type of businesses you will allow in Pomona and to think about removing the Planned Parenthood business from Pomona. Thank you for your time. Rachel
because of that, I uh, I've been targeted by God by by LA government because because uh, I know they've been doing all these things and um, and um, and it's just bad the things they do to people that they targeted. It's that's that's how that's why a lot of this problems with um, like in other places like the church thing and the Vegas thing because most people were targeted by by the same technology they they were targeting uh, people in LA and I don't know if you guys if you guys are aware of that but it's it's something that's <laughs> happening like you can investigate like in my case like what what happened to me in my family and I'm pretty sure you will see you guys can see this um, technology to make people go crazy. They already opened a lot of mental hospitals because it's a lot of people they've been um, targeting with this thing. And I know it's every guy said it, you know, I know that. He's the one that's going into those programs. I can prove it. It's just if someone investigates that, I'll be able to do that. What I'm saying is true. <coughs> Genevieve Peters, please come to my right. <coughs> Good evening. I am Rachel Alarcon, and if, as a young woman, I would like to show my support for Planned Parenthood. I believe it is a fundamental civil right for females to be able to decide what happens to their body. No woman should be forced to enjoy the hardships of pregnancy as pregnancy for whatever reason, whether it be religious reasons or moral reasons. It is also unfair to raise a child under inadequate living standards or putting them through the psychological effects of living in foster care. I would also like to display my support for the Ice Out of Pomona Coalition. I am speaking for those without a voice. It is unfair for children to fear losing their parents or yeah. even their daily life. What about I believe this? all what about parents deserve children? the opportunity yeah, to better their to life talk just about just as Christopher Columbus sought to do when he invaded the native land. It is unfair for us to praise a foreigner who raped and tortured the natives, yet deny those seeking to better our country a chance at a better life. Thank you for listening and good night. Boo. Brainwashed. 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 Robin Houston. Yeah, let's get her name on. Isn't that a Glenn Calvin song? Hi. Um, actually, that that little speech by the um, young student actually threw me off because it made me realize, you know, what ignorance is being taught in our schools. That's right. Exactly. And, yep. Uh, exactly. And, 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 even if you don't agree with them. Thank you. Can I have my time reset, please? Absolutely. Yes, thank you. And as that, and as an educator, seeing it in the school system and realizing how little American culture is being taught. We're doing an, an amazing disservice yep. to our American citizens. And that's what's happening because there's such a divisiveness that continues to happen because lies are being perpetuated on students like that. That's a perfect example, prime example. Another example is this uh, you know, woman um, is saying about celebrating and so excited about celebrating the Day of the Dead. First of all, that's not an American culture. That's not Americanized. That, that has nothing to do with our culture. But yet, schools, and I've been in many of them, that's what they're celebrating right now. And that's the disservice we're doing to our American citizens. These are all disservices. It's also a disservice for Pomona College to now have mandatory fees being used not only for freshmen and transfer students, which is wonderful because it does not divide, but now the students have decided they're gonna use mandatory fees to actually have a ride share for free rides only for illegals and students from gay families. So again, one more Jesus. lie, not being inclusive, totally trying to divide. We wow. are Americans. American America has a culture, and it continues to be eroded because, for some reason, someone told somebody that 
Immigration meant all I had to do was pick a country and I want to make a better life and I go there. No, that doesn't have, that's not how it means. That's not what it means and that's not what immigration is. Immigration is exactly what our president is saying it is. It's merit-based because that's what we want. If we want merit-based immigration and this is the country we live in, then we're going to have merit-based immigration, not people come over and I just want to have a good life and now I'm going to be separated from my family. Well, you know what? Make a better decision and don't come here illegally. Yes. Hey, they could, one. they clapped. Chris Rubio, please tell to my right. Yes, I would like to first thank the woman who spoke about her experience having an abortion. Very courageous for her to make those statements. God bless and you. And also, I think it is very alarming that the Planned Parenthood does not have to display a license. And I would say we need to focus on the civil rights for the unborn in our country. Yes. Secondly, I was one of the individuals that Congress member Norma Torres attempted to keep out of the earthquake seminar she presented. Shame. She was telling individuals they had to display their driver's license and be in the uh, district. We had all uh, procured tickets on the internet. It never made any reference to that. It was very embarrassing and very discriminatory for the Congress member to treat us in that fashion. Uh, but the good news is the police allowed us to attend the meeting. There was ample seating, but it was very discriminatory and we felt uh, as if she was being very prejudiced towards us. As far as the ordinance in regard to ICE out of Pomona, uh, we are a great nation because we are a nation of laws. And our federal law still clearly states you are to enter this country legally and then you are to reside in this country legally. Yes. That is the law. And we would prefer to see an ordinance, as has been mentioned earlier, to help the homeless in this community. It is burgeoning, it is heartbreaking to see those individuals in the community that have to sleep out in the elements at night. That should be the focus of the ordinance. Or our unemployed, helping Americans should be the focus. Ready, Becky now, so you're here. To my left. Welcome to the studio. Thanks. Uh, good evening, I'm Steve Castro. I'm, uh, I'm Chris Tubi from the Dot Center of the Arts, uh, 252 South Main Street, California. Uh, first, I'd like to say uh, Dot Center for the Arts was very honored to host the uh, Latino Roundtable celebration of Dia de los Muertos, which is a, a beautiful and uh, cult culturally yeah, uh, and community uh, inclusive event for us. Quite nice. Uh, last month, I introduced myself the as the uh, self proclaimed artist uh, laureate of the city of Pomona. So and uh, so far, I received no okay. objections from the council or audience. I did get a vote of confidence from the speaker who spoke uh, after I did last night. Um, also, um, I'd like to say that uh, the dog. Um, the Dove Center, um, uh, acting as a consultant for the Cultural Arts Commission, has completed and gotten approval for uh, a working arts registry for the city. Um, that should be a great help in accessing the public art fund and uh, spreading public art throughout the city at the moment. Um, as I said last month, uh, I may be biting off uh, the two, but one of my duties as artist laureate is bringing the council information concerning the arts colony that doesn't always make it to local media. Uh, for instance, there are three Pomona and three Claremont institutions, art institutions that have had projects accepted by the Getty Center in West LA for this year's biennial uh, Pacific Standard Time, LALA, which is Latino uh, and Latin American art in Los Angeles. Um, and in Pomona, the Fairplex at Miller Sheets Art Center downtown Pomona is uh, featuring a, an exhibit, uh, the American Ceramic Museum of Art, MOCA in Pomona also, and the Dawson Thank you. Uh, can I have Maureen Carroll, please come up to my right. 
And that's what it was retrieved later, but the issue is, is that nothing is safe being so far away. You can't even come out well, to see how your car is. But the biggest okay. issue is our families. Our families have nowhere to park. If you have a tiny baby, Bell, you cannot carry that baby and like no carry it all the way from the home. In the morning. Especially if you have two other That's children, you only have two hands. Trying to make people lose it's impossible. Um, this, this is a very small street to start with. You have people stopping in front of the apartments, having to put on their emergency lights. There's accidents, there's trucks, there's all kinds of things because we're next to the driveway into Cardena, so you have huge trucks dropping off. It is a, a packed up area. It's nobody's fault, but it is one major problem, or the issue is, is that <coughs> nobody was informed. No flyer was passed out. No one told us that these signs were gonna go up. As soon as the signs went up, parking tickets were passed out. Parking tickets this is happening are all over. Out to the <laughs> this is happening out. in Torrance as well. So they throw up original parking signs to make a bunch of money. It's been a huge Ever revenue generator, a million dollars, because they have they to show up their pension liabilities. Because they used to block the parking, the residents, with their trash cans. They would leave it there for four days. So it's not only vehicles taking up space, it's the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I can have Elizabeth uh, Carrillo. Uh, please come up to my left. Uh oh, here's, here's Creepy Ben. Good evening. He's a sign of looking rascal. My name is Reina Atleto. We're talking about the same problem with parking. I'm disabled. I can't work, walk very well. Sometimes I have to park on the other end of this block. Because where we live, there's no handicap parking. <laughs> so we're asking for your help to remove the permit uh, parking area that was uh, set up by homeowners. I'm not sure what their problem is with us parking there, but they um, would flatten our tires and they would key our cars. Oh. <laughs> And we would like to know how it is that they were able to make this change. And if it's by permit, then should we also be able to, shouldn't we also be able to get a permit to be able to park there? So that's what we would like for your to help us, to you to support us. And if we're not able to park where we normally park, uh, then you know we should get rid of these parking party only uh, signs. Thank you. Uh, just uh, just so you know, it appears that there are several folks that are going to want to speak on this matter, so that we'll have uh, an opportunity for them to hear what uh, our public works director has to say. Okay. All right. Can I ask Karina Renteria? Please come up to my right. <coughs> Welcome. Hello, my name is Lisa Tadeo. I have been living in Tijuana for 17 years now. In my street, I live on Palmares between uh, Phillips and Franklin. And so what I see on my street is we have a speed limit of 35, but there are cars going racing and everything. And so I would um, consider asking you if there's some sort of speed bumps or something because it's not safe because you know we have an elementary school and middle school and we have dairy. And so as a 17 year old walking, from my house to school, I do see that, and it's like drivers aren't cautious, and I would really appreciate it if we would have safety, especially if there's kids in my street and there's neighbors that do complain about this issue. Do, do you mind repeating the names of the streets? And Franklin. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, can you send Franklin uh, by assignments? 
Is Karina Renteria here? No? Okay. Uh, Adelaida Aguayo? Well, there's no is that guy a community agitator or something? Right, I guess. Please. Okay, my name is Corina Renteria, and uh, the problem that brought me here is because uh, also the same thing, the, the parking restrictions, and also getting tickets because I'm parked where I'm supposed to be, and I'm still getting tickets, saying that I'm parked in the unpermitted area, which that technically I'm not. So I don't have to be worrying all the time that um, the ticket person will come and give me a ticket on my car because I'm parked in the area I'm supposed to or probably the area I don't supposed to. I took pictures and everything. The issue is that um, not only that, uh, having the, um, the ticket person come and give tickets out of nowhere, and also, people not parking correctly or parking in, in the streets like they're the only ones there. I mean, we have a lot of apartments there and we should think, oh, also somebody can park here and not just that. And we have arguments with our neighbors because of the parkings and that those are supposed to be happening. I mean, everybody should respect everything and the parking itself and not just getting tickets all the time because we're probably um, not parking in the wrong spot, which it is our spot to park. I mean, we're not supposed to be worrying about that if you park correctly. Uh, Mosir Angel Garcia, I assume there's probably several for oh, okay, great. Okay. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you. 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 I have problems with my spine, and um, I've been given two tickets. One of them was given in the evening, and the other one was given in the morning. I want to let you know that in front of the houses where I used to be able to park, I'm not, they put up sign that I haven't been able to park there anymore. And even though I have a handicap permit, I still receive a, a ticket. Hmm. This is what's happening in California. We have parking issues, we have crowding issues, we have illegal aliens, people who don't speak English, lots of problems, and you're seeing it front and center here in Pomona. But we have people who are pro-life and pro-law and order, and we're speaking out against this stuff. So don't give up on California. We haven't. And he's the only one that seems to have any problem with us, it's, and it's him and it's not his wife, uh, because I've asked the other neighbors, and they've said that they don't have any problem with us parking there. Okay. They're creating the issue everywhere. Yeah, uh, it's parking issue. Was the same uh, Angel Garcia outside? <laughs> and then Guadalupe Rosas, yes. if they're both out there, he's bring them in.
Maybe maybe that's why he's so pro Planned Parenthood. Is that why? By killing all those people, then there's not a parking problem, right? Wow, that's that's an alternate thought, isn't it? Jeez. I'm here for the same purpose uh, that we're talking about with our neighbors, the uh, parking issue. Where, where, home residence? It seems to be plenty of parking around here. <laughs> the homeowners that live here on Erie never alerted us to the fact that they were going to be part of the parking lot. So if they're able to get parking permits, then we would all would just like to request that we also be able to get parking permits because it's causing problems. Um, there was fights breaking out between uh, people trying to park wow. at, the same, at the same time. Uh, whoever gets there first, and uh, so we were looking for your help on this issue. Thank you. I wonder if he's here illegal. Yeah, uh, I think maybe this is the last person who's going to park in the Julie brings up a really good point. How can they be parking, but they're driving, but they can't speak English? How can they be driving, but they can't speak English? I'm here on the same issue, the parking issue. Um, I just want to let you know my daughter studies far away. She's studying in Los Angeles. So when she gets home, it's very late at night. Um, there's one of the neighbors that has given her a lot of problems. <clears throat> Um, he's uh, insulted her, oh. and he's even said uh, things about her being an immigrant, and this is something that we don't want to escalate. Uh, we would like to ask you for your help, and if you can help them, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, if I could have uh, James and Ron, please come to my left. Welcome to the... Um... <coughs> They protect criminals, but they cannot protect uh, these people's the parking. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Chanel, Chanel, hey, Chanel, it's Arthur, how are you? I, I talked about how sanctuary cities hurt black communities. They hurt all communities. I talked about the fire bombings and black lives. He has, I have some issues with our neighbors okay. who are homeowners. Uh, they put up signs and we've been getting parking tickets. Ahora, uh, is there any uh, help that you can offer us, like maybe allow us also to get parking permits so that we can park on the street? Um, there's another issue. We used to park at the, at the Caranas in the parking lot, and they used to let us have permission to park there, but they haven't been allowing us to park there. I think that's all. But if there's anything that you can help us with, like a permit, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Don. Um, what, who, I don't know if all the speakers on the parking are in the lobby, but I presume that Negative Way is out there. Uh, but if all of them can be there, I uh, think you're.
and uh, it's great to see that many people, especially the young kids out there, and it's great to see uh, them getting their medals. And you won your division. Yeah, so um, <laughs> hopefully I got a little next year, I'll be back to defend my title, <laughs> my gold medal. But I'm uh, here to uh, speak about the, uh, the draft of the ordinance, the uh, SB 54. Mm. Uh, it's been earlier stated that we're a nation of laws and obey the law. Yep. Well, um, the fact is that SB 54 is the law. No, it's or not. Or it will be uh, January 1st. <laughs> it's in violation of federal law. That's right. There is federal law and there right, is. I'm just going to just. It's in violation of federal law. He's speaking, and you spoke, he didn't speak up. Article 6, Section 2, Supremacy Clause. Yes, in my capacity as a attorney law, in the state of California. He's a crackpot California lawyer who should have his license revoked. I'm going to speak as to what the law is. There is federal law and there is state law. Uh, SB 54 was carefully crafted to not conflict with the federal law. That's no. the whole purpose of it. No, it wasn't. It is law and yeah. the NFL. One of the provisions of the law Probably, is there yeah, he gets the legal money. papers. <laughs> by imposing additional duties on law enforcement, that this will impose a state-mandated local program. And that local program calls for stakeholders' input. That's why it's uh, necessary and we think the company upon the council to seek uh, public input by the ordinance <coughs> and to assure the people of state of uh, city of Pomona that the law will be implemented as it is intended to be. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Samara. Uh, could I have uh, I wonder if he has a door. I read this correctly. I know the last name is I wonder if he has any walls to his office. He's coming back. Open borders, <laughs> open doors. <laughs> Let them all in. Good evening, my name is Lisa Leva and I'm a senior at Gary High School and I've come to address the topic of establishing an Amazon headquarters in Pomona. Although it sounds like a great opportunity for the city, it may not be as beneficial for its community. The majority of our community is predominantly Hispanic and most of them are, are, are not citizens who will benefit from these hundreds of jobs that will be brought. So we have to stop and ask ourselves, at the end of the day, will we really be helping our community? So it's fighting and against high-paying jobs. Point out, um, I myself am an argument against high-paying jobs. And I came here for a better he tomorrow. He does not want high-paying jobs. He wants crappy jobs. I believe Unbelievable. not all of us are the same. So I just wanted to, I guess, apologize. I guess, given a bad reputation to our community, but we are not all the same. The <coughs> America itself was started by immigrants, and I believe that we can try with Continuing like this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, can I have a step on you, Melanie? Please come up to my right. <coughs> Welcome to the My name is Sahawi Singh. I'm a senior at Jerry High School, and I wanted to address an issue that should be upsetting in my school, and that is the quality of the restrooms. I want to quickly say that I personally believe that the restrooms are important. Yeah. This is ultimately a health risk for the students at Jerry High School, especially since we don't have the necessities like seat covers. More often than not, we do not have toilet paper. Wow. Although this is a school district wow. issue, I wanted to bring the city council's attention to this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Uh, I'm something that I'm a student from Derry High School. Today I'd like to address the gang activity, not only in our neighborhood, but also in our school. <laughs> the activity has become very evident in our school. It has become to my attention that many students are now frightened to walk on campus where we are promised nothing for safety. This is due to many of the students being gang affiliated. I find it absurd that the students must not only have to worry about the life at home, their grades, college education, and other ideas that they are in a gang environment. There was also a recent issue where a bike broke out at the cemetery less than a mile away from our school. I remember getting a call from my friend's little sister and saying that they were on lockdown. You could hear nothing but fear in her voice and when she was <laughs> she, she she stated that she did not want to return to the place Who's where she didn't the feel issues, safe. The and I just like to bring to the attention that people are not only having to deal with problems in the society now, it has become a school wide issue and it has become um, very difficult for the students to focus on their study while being in an environment like that. And I just like to bring that to the attention that it's becoming not only a society, and not only an issue for the society, but the students now as well. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gustavo. 
These are college students who are high school students doing it for credit. Good evening, State Council. Um, I'd like to acknowledge all of your participation. Those of you came to the uh, Pomona 5K, um, I was there too. Um, thank you to those of you who stopped by our zero waste booth. I'd like to share with you some of the data that I collected from that event. Um, those of you who were there saw that we collected all of the waste that was produced at the event, we brought it to the booth, and we sorted everything by hand. Pablo and I were there at the booth. We have been working with the 5K planning committee to make the event as zero waste as possible, and that culminated on the day of the event. The final data that we collected demonstrated that we were able to divert 95% of the waste that was collected at the event from landfills. That's an incredible number. It looks like there's very little interest in pushing for a sanctuary city in terms of we had a comparable number of we people speak out against really it. really make better use of our resources. This lesson is really important for all of us to consider, and I would like to call your attention so the resolution that the United Forces of Pomona brought to you in June, all of you have had a copy of this resolution. It calls for a community and ecologically oriented approach to zero waste for waste management in the city of Pomona. It asks us to look carefully at our priorities, putting community and environment ahead of profit, to look at the places where there has traditionally been issues such as code enforcement, yep. and facilitate the remediation of those issues. He was issues. talking about code enforcement. I followed up with several city council members asking for feedback on this resolution. I have not yet received it. Christina Carrizosa asked the attorney to give you feedback on the legality of this resolution. I haven't heard back on that. I believe the time is now to bring it to the agenda and to not keep letting this issue slide by. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Fernando Romero. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gustavo Gallas. I'm here as a representative of Cal Poly Pomona student government and the entire student body population of Cal Poly Pomona. I'm here with my colleagues, Athena Garcia Gunn and Juan Garcia. And I'm here to read a statement from our Native American Student Center. The statement reads as follows. Native American student groups would like to thank Pomona City Council for adopting Indigenous People's Day and changing the course in how we and our younger generations recognize and celebrate this day as we What is an Indigenous person? What's in and what Indigenous talk about? Thank you. But he didn't say anything about sanctuary. Did you notice that? That's interesting. This whole country is a sanctuary. I first want to thank you all for holding up this space and being so gracious and you know having this debate here uh, in the city council chamber. Uh, I'm here to speak on favor of the Isla Pomona Coalition, to speak on favor of the Isla Pomona ordinance that is being brought forth to this council. Uh, since I want to thank the uh, announcing <coughs> the city attorney for his uh, um, his advice, his counsel, conversation with us to in order to spread this. Uh, uh, this board has been uh, brought forth, and as, as already mentioned, you know it is. Um, you know we are this is a temporary law, and it will be a law as of January first. No. And not only is it important to follow the law, but this is something that's also important on on on, on what's right, on what's morally right. I didn't know this one for one of these people in the, the sanctuary, for the state, and for this country. I do seriously that the way that we treat the immigrants, the way we treat the streets, is that they send their kids to school for months too. They didn't demand a free lunch program. A couple decades, even this century, and I think uh, as Pomona remains a very really well, but I think we're we do we do a lot better. You know, and we definitely want to take care of this before we definitely want to make sure that our our federal law trumps the state. That they're safe, that they're able to contact local law enforcement. They cannot decide to disregard immigration laws. They're being afraid of doing that. Um, so it says that we would like to bring this important uh, to uh, City Council on the agenda at uh, next time. And once again, my name is Fernando, uh, director of the PSC, the Baylor of the and we uh, support the board. Shame on him for having the name. Shame on him for what? Thank you, Mayor. For having the name, Fernando. Thank you for the rest of the council members. I appreciate 
um, your time and your okay. service. His name is Fernando. Um, yeah. I thank you for this opportunity. He should not be named um, Fernando. My name is Kelly Alvarez, and I'm Who's here in Arizona. <laughs> I am the daughter of two immigrants, a proud daughter of two immigrants, legal immigrants who became naturalized citizens, and um, I appreciate this opportunity to be able to. They became naturalized citizens. Um, we hear a lot in the news that. about disenfranchised people, disenfranchised people, marginalized people, um, you know, people of different cultures, or alternative lifestyles. Uh, we've heard things about human rights here today, um, justice, and et cetera, for, um, for immigrants and others. Um, but I'm here to speak for the most vulnerable in our community. And um, Someone mentioned about those without a voice, I think, in regards to illegal immigrants. I'm here to speak for those who really don't, do not have a voice. Yes. This right here represents oh a 10 to 12 week child, um, a little pink baby. But it represents all different colors of babies. And unfortunately, babies like this, smaller and larger than this baby, have become um, victimized. And the womb, where it should be the safest place for these babies, has become um, a very dangerous place for them. The womb should be the safest place. Since Roe versus Wade, 20 million African American babies have been killed. 20 million African babies have been killed. This is not a pump of tissue. Again, it represents a baby. It's a model of a real baby with real legs, little toes. Young ladies, I love hearing the young ladies here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I should run for a Gustavo. It's C A L L E. He did? He did. I never. Okay. I It's back here. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to just say briefly, um, even though we don't Six see, uh, weeks, two or three days. Uh, even though we don't always see eye to eye, I think that this um, process speaks volumes about this country, which is the opportunity to, be able to share your thoughts and opinions. And um, everyone had the opportunity to do that. Uh, so I just want to express that. Uh, even though we may not always see eye to eye or agree on any point. Uh, with that, I'd like to just propose that we take a short recess uh, and come back. Okay? Thank you. Works for me. Hey, Tani, how are you? We killed over 60 million babies since Roe It's uh, yeah, it's, it's pathetic. It is a, yeah. Half of the black pregnancies are terminated by abortion. Well, it was designed to kill black women. Yeah, Hard they targeted to black lives. Yeah. So, it's they don't list agenda, but these ignorant liberals, they just don't understand. They're being brainwashed. I had to come when you called me out. I'm, I'm glad you made it. I just got home, I took a shower really quick. And oh, okay. Corona's like nearby, isn't it? Okay, that's pretty good. What is it? Oh, she likes the hat? No, no, I need that. No. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, no, I. Yeah. That's my hat. Those are my hats, please. Can you sacrifice one hat? Where did you where do you get these hats? Alright, well uh, it's a well, housing member. Yeah, but what I need is like the problem is it's like that it's one hat, it's another hat. Also they like to like sell the house. Can I live in Mexico illegally for twenty years? I know. If your president give me citizenship? No. Okay, yeah, my problem okay, it's a good shot. It's okay. Then, then you, if she's willing to pay for it, I guess. I mean, yeah, it, it, 20 dollars. 20, 20 
Yeah, I, I that's I, what, because what's gonna start happening is like all of them start getting handed handed out because that's what happens. I know, but I, I have to I have to have borders. There's a door, and I have to lock it, and there have to be walls. <laughs> You know, I, this is it. Otherwise, they get they get snapped up because that's what I have to be. Okay. Well, all right. Someone's willing to pay for it, so I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Sorry. For, yeah. So I I have to do that. You know, like these those hats were they were a gift. They were used to be props for activism, and if they get taken away, then I won't have them anymore. So, Robin. Diligently donated to allow that to be okay. You gotta get the soap ready. Okay. Get soap ready. See, cause we have a door and we lock it. <laughs> we have a wall. A big beautiful wall. <laughs> we have a gun safe to lock our hats in. Yes, I, it's come to that. I heard that uh, the guy who killed the, the shooter from Texas yeah. was an NRA instructor. Yes. So that's it. You know, this is a really big shift that's happening where the people can't scream gun control anymore. It's not working. We will know. What you have is criminals, you have atheistic evil people, and we're calling it out. How how was this shoot how was this shooter corralled? <clears throat> you see that guy with the manila hat? He's the one who, who attacked okay. You giving it back? Okay. There you go. You got the hat back? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You will buy it? Okay. 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 Whatever. But I, I can't have them being slipped. Away. I have to be really tight on it. If it gets taken away. Okay. If you want to do that? Okay. So I'll give you that back. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that we have a Pomona Republican. I'm very glad. Can I, I'm, is it okay if I go say hi really quick? I gotta go say hi. I would keep it Okay. Sure. I'll keep it Privacy. Okay. So I shouldn't say anything. Just keep it. I won't say anything. I don't want her to be alarmed. She's doing it. She has to be careful. She has to be careful. Right. This is a town. You know, this this town kind of reminds me of Hawthorne. It's not as uh, segregated. Well, I mean, I, I see a little more diversity than I expected. I've seen black, Hispanic, Vietnamese. This is like Hawthorne. You you know what I'm talking about if you've been to Hawthorne. I mean, it's still like majority minority. It's what you're saying. It's not anymore. Oh, uh, no, okay. Is this where Carol Shapley? Okay. Unbelievable. And then, I mean, this is, but it is kind of sad, though, because you have, like, yeah, you got Norma Torres is here. Before that, who was here before? Oh, no, uh, Negretti. Negretti McLeod was here. Gloria, with the funny hat. Yeah, and she got and she got beat down in that supervisor's race. That was nice. That was my day. Okay. So, hey. Hey. <laughs> I, well, we've got public comments done. We made our case. Um, I think we, we, we were comparable, actually. I, I, my, my guess is they're going to bring the ordinance forward. Oh. Because the, um, for the one in the beacon, like, activists say they've been meeting with the attorney. I know. Where's the city attorney? I'd like to talk to him. They're doing all of this like it's all virtue signaling anyway because it's not going to really work. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, federal law trumps state, state law. It trumps state law. So when they say obey state law, organizations. No, can't do it. There's, there, it's going to be a lawless conflict. And then they're like, oh, but it was like, it was written carefully. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's totally out of compliance. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? I know. The lawyers for Kevin DeLeon wrote it. Yeah. Oh, a future senator? No. The senator had to make sure that... So, so tell us, do you two plan on voting for Feinstein? Of course. 
Baltimore. I will vote for Feinstein before I vote for Trump. If, if, it, if that's what it comes to. It will be Feinstein. If we have to vote between Sanctuary State Leon and Feinstein, because she posted it for 54. So that helps, that helps a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I you vote for Sanchez? You did vote for Sanchez? Okay. I, I wrote in Dana Rora Walker. Yes, I did. I, I couldn't handle it. It was, it was odious to me. Well, we didn't follow here, so we think Yeah, it's terrible. What we need is, like, federal intervention. We need Jeff Sessions to do his job and start beating down uh, this. We need an active attorney general going after this crime and corruption and, and illegals and arresting Hillary and arresting Podesta. It's, um... Let's call Jeff tomorrow. I know. Tell him to come down. To Maria, if, if she sits with him every day, she needs to really make it clear. You need to do your job. She never minces words. Do you, I don't know, are any of the heifers or the brown supremacists? I don't know if they're here. Yes, I am. I streamed everything. Wanting a little action. Yeah, a little. Do you want to? I think you ready to go. Yeah, a little. Had enough with the, yeah, little, enough with the uh, civility. Yeah. <laughs> civility. That's the word I was. Yeah, we we want drama. We want action. We want heifers. We want heifers. No, I will take civility any day. I know. I know. I'm all for the whole United States, all the government things that got myself. So, all right, let me click the hats. Let me click the hats. Yeah, unless you want to, unless you want to buy it. So you're gonna kick off? Yes, our work is done. There's the there's the mayor. Okay. Oh, we're taking off. Are you ready to go? Thank you. Yeah, we've had more than enough, especially after dealing with Torres Jr. here. Can you help me out here a little bit? I'm trying to like. I can't open the bag. I just need to open the bag. Sure. Okay, so we want to make sure. No. I just need the hat. Okay. Okay. Mecha is anti-Semitic. They don't like Jews. I've studied it. Mecha is anti-Semitic. Oh no, it still is. Mecha is anti Semitic. They're anti Semitic. I don't like that. And now she's gonna be. I'll be in a photo. Oh yeah, okay. I wanted to tell you guys about something. Okay. So, um, off record or on record? Well, okay. Yeah. Give me a sec. I'll just. Oh, cool. Okay. So what's happening? Are, there? are there creepy people out there? Oh, the heifers are here. No, these are different browns. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. I want, I want everyone to hear. About a year ago, I went to an event that Tim Sandoval was at, the mayor. He was running for mayor, he was a councilman. And then the mayor at the time was also there, so Tim and the mayor. It was at a mosque, at a mosque, oh my they were pandering to Muslims. Oh my so gosh. I'll, I'll post the video tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. They're, they're a bunch of haters, huh? Yeah, he said, he said, oxymoron. Wow. Yeah. Guatemala in here for Trump. That's oxymoron. He's not. I'm sorry. That goes so well. Okay. 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 Wow. Okay, so who's the... So Gary, wait a minute. So it's, you're saying Ben's the, the guy who rounds up... Oh, Tom. But what about that guy? Is it, but Ben is like a, another one. Right here? This guy? Right here? Okay, really quick. Wait a minute. Okay. So you're pro-illegal, is that correct? Is that correct? What, what, you don't want to look at Ruben here who was killed by an illegal? Is that a problem? Suddenly he doesn't want to, to talk, talk to anymore. Me. I already asked you not to talk to me. I'm allowed to talk to anyone I want to. It's a public sphere. 
You go out of your way to translate for people who don't even speak. How can they be? How can they not speak English and yet they're driving? How is that even possible? Yeah, it sure does. Is it because he's white? He looks white. Wow. Whiter than you. How could you possibly? Citizen came in there and spoke. Uh, a language other than English, seriously, I was going to scream. I told I, I told Robin that. I'm so done uh -huh. with people coming up and speaking their language instead of English. You want to know why we get so frustrated about lack of assimilation? Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. that's a complete smack in our face. How many years have you been here uh -huh. and you can't even have the decency to learn our language? Yeah, to learn. Yeah. about disrespect yeah. right there. I don't that's think I could go to Mexico and go to a public meeting and no. demand... A translator want totally. for me to speak English. Man, how about could you go or to, go to Vietnam? Demand that they feed your children at school, right? Or would they tell you to pack your kids? Or, or driver's licenses? Yeah, you're gonna have to do it. My camera's rolling. And how about the Vietnamese community? They all they, they, they learned all, English. You know what that man said, "Love it or leave it." Yeah, he said that. He did. So that's the guy right there. That's the guy who was instigating at Claremont, and he attacked people in Claremont and shamed them. That's slender. No, it isn't. We have it on record. Go for it. Put it on full blast, buddy. You don't intimidate me. Hey, Ben Wood got triggered today. He's like, oh, you slandered me. I've got it on record, so you can put that on your videos. Fernando. Fernando, we want to get a group shot. What is it, Ben? Do you want to take another look at this? Yes or no? That's what we say, right? I know, and I, I, so I, I, I'm, I'm more optimistic. Very uninspiring. I think it's not going to happen. Actually, no way. No. They only know what their teachers tell them. To know. What are we talking about? We're, we're talking about getting in a photo. Wait a minute, but it needs it needs a flash. Is, do you have the flash on? I thought that there was a light on. There. Do you know they had homeless tents Trump here for a while? Trump, Trump all the way. Trump, 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 Trump. Trump, Trump. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Okay, here we go. Right over here, guys. Come on in. Trump is the man heroes. with the right master here, plan. Here, here we go. One, two, three. Trump. One more, one more. Yes. Take a few, please. Take a few. Thank you. Yeah, one more, one more. You got a city hall in the back, Pomona City Hall? Let me, let me, let me. He'll go back a little for us. <laughs> I don't want you to get hurt. No, we're good, we're good. I got don't go running with my camera because I can run fast. Okay, we'll push it in a little more. Oh, oh, okay. oh the whole the, the whole group. If I squeeze anymore, I'm gonna get it. Are you a, are you a photographer? <laughs> yes he is. No, no, squeeze, squeeze more to the Trump. All right. Awesome. Hey, awesome. all right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Here we are, folks. Where Where are all the heifers? Shopper. Shopper. Hi. How you doing? He likes Trump. Oh, cool. There's my card. Awesome. That's why I asked him. Yes. Always follow me. Yeah. Don't say that too loud. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah right? right. Where are all the, the heifers and the brown supremacists? So did, did somebody give you a hard time for being brown and a Trump supporter? Is that what happened? Yes, yes. Wow, that sounds yes. racist. Oh, very, yeah. I'm a Guatemalan Trump Oh, is that the guy who called you names? Wow, you mean the guy in the suit? This is the guy who gave you a hard time? Let's make this. I, I, didn't, I didn't call him names, I just said uh, being for Trump and being from Guatemala just doesn't make sense. Why? Because. Many people from Guatemala are here illegally. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. And, and well, some are here illegally. Okay, some are like this gentleman. Yeah. But you know what? In this, just remember, we're a small little blue marble in a big universe. You're talking about Guatemala or the about Earth? Oh, sure. And the Earth, the Earth, before humans were here, uh -huh. were no no borders. The Wrong. Earth, the Earth, no. The Earth. So your cosmology is what? I gotta understand that you're an evolutionary. 
Um, probably not. Yeah, evolution maybe. Okay. You know, so that's usually the what world, inspires the world them. developed. You know, borders were created by men. Yes, they were. Right. Not because, by God. Uh, actually, yes, they were. Absolutely. You can you can talk about Jerusalem. You can talk about. You can read. Well, do you want to talk about God? So, which is it? Did God create the earth, or is everything just a spring out of nothing? Which is it? Just spring out of nothing. Okay, then you can't talk about God I with any talk kind about of. Anything. Well, you know, but with any with any seriousness, I don't think so. Why not? Because it's not consistent and it's well, not right. Why are you right. filming everything? I'm allowed to because it's a public place, and I want to be ex sharing to the world what's going on. Like that guy over there who said to Agnes Gibney. <laughs> That guy right over there who said to Agnes that it was a good thing that her son was killed, murdered by an illegal. That guy thought it was cute and said, we're glad that there's one less Nazi in the world. That's what that guy said right there. But as for borders, do you have a door to your home? Do you have walls? Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. As a country, we're allowed to have walls and we're allowed to have a door. And we're allowed to ensure our sovereignty. When you tear down the walls to your home, then you can tell me that there's no such thing and we shouldn't have borders. Okay. Do you want to apologize to Miss Gibney for saying that her son deserved to die? You know what's crazy? What's crazy is saying to a grieving mother that her son was murdered and that he deserved to die, claiming that he was a Nazi. We have it on record. That man calling a son of a mother. This son was murdered by an illegal. And he called him a Nazi. I'd like to see what he has to say about that, but of course not. Notice how they run away. They run away because it's brown supremacy. Yep. Bigotry. Honestly, the child endangerment charge is probably more severe. Oh, yeah. Than the assault. We're talking about Fullerton. Uh, what's going on with that? Yep. Just got a, I, I wrote him okay, today yeah, and said, hey, what's going on? Is it progressive? Is it a, did they file a charge yet? Well, uh, they're going to. They're gonna, yep. Good. Hang her out to dry. Has Gary has an announcement for the Trump supporters. Is everybody that's here going to be in Huntington Park tomorrow? Raise your hand if you're going to be. Okay, wait a minute. Should this be off record? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Give me a sec, phone. All right, folks. Um, all right, I got to take off, but you can see we rocked it here. I doubt we're going to actually see a Sanctuary City proposal here. All right, folks, I'll talk to you later.